Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hello Social Catfish, my name is Barb. I'm from Lima, Ohio. I'm 60 years old. I'm here to tell my story about being romance scammed and what my experiences are and Hopefully I can help others. I met this fellow on Christian Mingle and I thought I was going to be safe on Christian Mingle. We just started talking, normal conversation as it kept progressing and we were getting to know each other better. We got more comfortable talking to each other. Right away he started to saying how he loved me and how he wants to be with me and wants to marry me and I think Part of it was the attraction, and part of it was that he was saying he was a Christian. We were praying together, and, you know, that's what attracted me, because I was trying to find a Christian man. We were setting up a time to meet each other, and I said, well, I have a three-day off, and I said, we can do it on that day. And okay, he said, sure. I says, uh, you'd have to stay in a motel. He had the money and that he could be in a five-star hotel i was looking forward to that and he sounded like he was excited about it too until he said well pray for me because i am waiting on this job to go through hopefully i can get it and i said okay well, i'll pray for you so i did a little prayer for him and then he told me that Monday he's got to go and see about it. So he texts me back and says, yes, he got the job. But he says, I have to get things ready to leave. And I said, well, shoot. I says, we're not going to be able to meet each other then. He says, yeah, I know. I ain't going to be able to meet you. I said, well, I guess we can set up a time when you get back. Where he's at, their signal is weak and he can't get into his bank account. He says, I have to purchase machines, so will you help me transfer some money to this company? I said, okay. I snapshot that it went through to him. He says, oh, great. He got all excited about that. He says, thanks, I needed that. Well, when morning came, he contacted me, asked me if I was ready to help him again to transfer some more money and I go okay and this was for to deliver the machines for 25,000 and the first transaction was for 150,000 I believe it was I got in there and we did the same thing pretty much when I went to submit it then that's when it wouldn't go through and it said that his account was was temporarily blocked the first time he's asked for money is because he couldn't get that transaction to go through. So it was $25,000 that he needed to have these machines delivered to him. I said, well, I don't have $25,000 and I'm not involving my family or anything like that. I says, I can't do it. He says, well, I talked to the company and they said they would take like $5,000 to start with and they would send maybe a couple machines or even one machine to even start what he needed to start. I'll agree to give you the $5,000, but you're gonna have to give me a contract that you're gonna pay me back plus a fee. As I said, I'm not gonna do it until I have a contract. So it had this attorney signed on it, had his name signed on it, and then uh, what the agreement was for. So I had a transfer wire made up and then the 5,000 did go to him. So they did deliver him at least one machine, but then that machine was the wrong machine that they sent him. He needed the rest of the money to get the right machines coming to him. This chemicals has to get sealed within seven days or they would erupt or explode. So I started making applications for loans. I got another loan for like $8,000 that came to me. So I just kept making loans and getting loans and they kept just depositing it in my bank. So the pressure was on me 
Plus, he sent me a couple videos. He sent me a video, like in the middle of the night, of one of the barrels that blew up. He said there was people that got hurt. There was fire and flame. He said it was really bad. And we did lose one person. And he says, oh my gosh. So that put the burden on me. The whole time, the burden was on me. I thought I, you know, because I didn't get this money, somebody died because of it. And it, it was bad. It was just bad. Finally, we got that sent to him. The machines, I think he got them, and he was happy about that. So he canceled his first phase out that he wanted to quit the job because he was having so much trouble. He told the company he wasn't going to finish the job, but then he had to get some money to pay off the crew that he hired. Since he was declining the job after the first phase, they were sending him some money that they did owe him and stuff because he had to pay for his, the crew. He says, we're going to have to send it the money directly to you. I says, oh, okay. And this was supposed to have been like 2.5 million in this locked steel box that was supposed to have been delivered to me. I gave him my information that he needed so they could send this money to directly to me. Cause I told him, I said, well, if I get that, that money delivered to me, I want to have my money out of there so I can pay my loans off and get these loans out of the way. He says, oh yeah, we'll take care of that. I'll give you the combination and everything. And I says, okay. So that was the motivator there. Well, it was going through different countries and I was tracking the package and everything was going smoothly until it got to Costa Rica. They wanted 33,000 something for insurance reasons to continue the package to get to me. We were going back and forth trying to see what we could pay just to get the package going again. I got all the loans to raise the money for 33850 They started delivering it, and then when it got to Mexico City, they needed more money then, more than what the 33000 was, like 56000 And then that's when I completely stopped. I says, I can't do this anymore. I feel sick. I can't do it. I says, I'm sorry. I was losing sleep. I was sick. My emotions were really running high. He says, well, you can't let me lose all our money. This is our money. You know, you know, he just kept including me as our, this is going to be our money. And this would be something for our future. And I'm wanting to retire. And I just kept, you know, getting driven because of this package and the money was going to be there and I can pay my loans and we can live our life, you know, as a, you know, a normal couple. I already told him, I says, I'm really deep into this already with the money situation, six loans. I think the highest one was 12,000. I had maybe about 56,000. I mean, I could have paid off my home with that. After we received this video call from Barb, our social catfish team dug into all the information that Barb provided. We scoured the internet to find out who Martin stole these photos from. We checked out all the Bitcoin addresses and found out that they had been created specifically to collect the money that Barb sent. Both of the wallets had the exact dollar amount that Barb sent and haven't been used since. The website that Barb was using to track the $2 million package that Martin sent her was created in the same month that Martin sent the package to her. We had to find answers and provide some kind of closure for Barb. We decided to sit down with her and go over what we found. If you're looking to find the identity of your online lover, you can start with the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. So Barb, thanks for taking the time to uh, you know, sit down and go over everything that we found. You're in a relationship with this man named Martin. He had like this elaborate scheme to get you to send money. And you sent us a ton of information, which was great. And we're excited to talk to you about this. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready.
First thing that I want to hop into, Barb, is uh, the photos that you sent over. He sent a bunch of photos. The problem is, at first glance, most of the photos just seemed off. You could tell that there was just something wrong about them. When you received these photos from Martin, did you ever think, you know, that they might be fake? Yeah, it was an emotional time. Um, trying to follow through on everything he was asking and requesting. And I felt like I needed to do that. It's just the way he talked to me and stuff. It, you know, got me a little bit emotional and made me feel like in a way in a fantasy world or it's too good to be true type of thing. But my mind was telling me that I wanted that, you know, wanted that attention, I guess. But um, but then on the other hand, I kind of knew it was too good to be true. I don't even know why I continued when I did. Pretty much every single photo that he sent you was 100% photoshopped. So if you look at this one where he's wearing the blue jacket and he's got that, um, he's got that white piece of paper, that is completely photoshopped. That writing is completely photoshopped. And if you zoom in on it, it's just so much sharper than the rest of the picture. Another one that I wanna talk about is the one with the hard hat. Looking at this photo, you can just tell it's 100% photoshopped. It was chopped away from another photo and we actually ran a reverse image search and found that photo. I mean, it just feels wrong. What I, like when you stare at a, some of these pictures, right? And um, just the lighting and, and the over contrast and the saturation that, that this person put into these photos. Barbara was blinded by love when she received these photos from Martin. We wanna test your Photoshop eyes. What do you think is Photoshopped in these photos? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm just a little curious. Um, every time that he sent you one of these images of himself, was there any red flags going off in your in your head when he would send you these images? Yeah, it did. It was more so too that really got me thinking because he would never video chat with me. And Barb, we understand that this was a tough time for you and this is a ton of manipulation and um, you know these are people that prey on people that are going through tough times so we're not completely surprised that he was able to to dupe you with these photos because the things that you were going through at the time and the, these guys are just master manipulators too. So Barbara you know leading into those images that Drew was discussing about um, take for instance the Illinois driver's license so what we did is we took the driver's license and we compared it to the state of Illinois sample driver's license. We noticed some inconsistencies with the license that Martin sent you compared to the sample version. Um, just going through um, the few things that stood out to me is that the expiration date, this should always match the date of birth and it doesn't on Martin's driver's license. And another thing that I also wanted to point out to you is it's called the DD number. It's the document discriminator number at the very bottom of the driver's license, which everyone has. It's a security code. It gives you information such as where and when this license was issued. So notice that in Martin's ID and the Illinois sample ID, the numbers match. So what that tells me is he most likely copied the sample driver's license and didn't bother changing the bottom number. His picture is off of one of it, like his website picture. He's in a suit and tie in his driver's license. I don't really know too many people who dress up for their driver's license. During my conversations with him, I did bring it up to him and saying, well, this don't look right and all this stuff. And then I did tell him when I went and showed it to the police and they also said that it wasn't um, legal license or whatever. 
Barb, the reason why we touch on things like this so often in these videos is because we see them so often. These scammers, we say it all the time, they're clever, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're smart, right? Like you can always find something within every document a scammer sends you. There's, I've never seen a document or a driver's license, a website that's been sent to a person and I couldn't pick out like a part or a word that was misspelled or just something is just always out of place. So we do these videos to let people to know to look at the documents and look at these IDs yeah. and, and these websites that these people send, send to them and find these little flaws because the government's never gonna make these mistakes, right? And, and an established business is never gonna misspell a, a word on their website. I just, some of those things I seen that I should have stopped right away. I mean, when I thought they were red flags and, and I would argue back and forth with this person and tell them, but they always come back with the right answers to tell you. And, and you just kind of think about it and it's a, uh, it makes sense, you know? So I just let it, go on but you shouldn't let it go on you should you know stop it right then and there when you know those things but you were smart enough to stop it though barb that's you know you could have kept going i've seen a lot of other people a lot of other victims that have been in the same spot you were in and this scam that you that you were involved in is a very common scam. It's a parcel scam. We just released a video last week on the same exact thing that you went through and talked about this. It's the same website, the same uh, tracking number on the package. But the good thing that you did, Barb, was you should stop sending the money. Right. You were able to wake yourself up. Some of those things I seen that I should have stopped right away. I mean, when I thought they were red flags and, and I would argue back and forth with this person and tell them, but they always come back with the right answers to tell you. And, and you just kind of think about it and it's, uh, it makes sense, you know? So I just let it go on, but you shouldn't let it go on. You should, right. you know, stop it right then and there when you know those things. So we did some reverse image searches um, with, for Martin's images that you had sent us. And what we had found out was Martin's real name is Craig. He is an art collector. We even found a few websites that showcase his beautiful home in Palm Springs. We sent Martin a special link in hopes that he clicked on it so we could track his IP. They were a desktop and also a mobile device. When I matched up the mobile devices and the desktop clicks, I found that all four of those clicks were all in Lima, Peru. Lima is the capital of Peru. It's the largest city in Peru, right? Uh, there was three clicks there, so that leads us to believe that and gives us the confidence that that's his real location. So he's in Peru, okay. Yeah. You know, that makes me feel better because that's a confirmation more so that uh, I'm not talking to that person anymore, <laughs> for sure. Oh gosh, okay, that's, that is good news to know. After Barb got off this call, she confronted Martin about being located in Peru. This was his response. And then she blocked him right away. The shipping company is still asking her to send the additional $50,000 so she could receive the $2 million package that Martin had sent to her. Barbara told us they will never get another dime from her and she is going to continue to online date. And this was a lesson learned. Please comment something to help lift her spirits in the comment section below. It takes a lot for these people to open up and be transparent about being scammed. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. 
We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.